Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> they are absolutely priceless glasses. A listener sent us these. This is why I'm not allowed nice stuff. I've well, just... you said, Mikey says that. That's a northern thing. I've just, if you're just joining us, um, Gene Davis, welcome to our Friday episode. I've just broken one of William's fancy glasses. They're that... not mine. They're, they're, they're very expensive. How did I manage that? I did this last week with um, a coffee cafetiere and a wine glass. They say it comes in freeze. <laughs> <laughs> and that's three things I've broke glass this week. I got a bollock in here last week. Lucky you. Right, welcome to our Friday episode. This is where we can see how much extra content we squeeze into your week, what we can break, and random things that have been sent in. <laughs> extra bits from our week and how our advice went down with you, our wonderful G and Divas. You're right. Well, I want a drink. Do you want my? I know. I don't want to give you my glass. Just get. This me... is the last one of the, a very executive Just... part of a very executive matching set. Just get me a sippy cup. Anyway. Yes. A sippy cup. We'll do that for the next episode. Uh, uh, There's a whole routine I can copy. What, for a sippy cup? <laughs> yeah. I'll just drink front bottle. Go on, what have we got today? <laughs> okay, well, we asked for our... No. <laughs> I'm, I'm unemployed. I need to start drinking. No else to do it. You're not unemployed. Like... This employs you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We asked for your suggestions for who Campman's sidekick would be. Oh, yeah. This is what our um, Dream Diva said. X and Art Design says he has three. Sprinkle, Sparkle and Spunk. Like the Powerpuff Girls. Yes. <laughs> there could be a few of them. Mm. So we could have Sprinkle. Sparkle. We could have Sparkle. So we could have Sprinkle on his shoulder. You, me and Ben. Sparkle on his other shoulder and Spunk on his face. You, me and Ben can be the Powerpuff Boys. Yes. You could be Sprinkle. I can be sparkle, sparkle and Ben can be spunk. Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, Bronwyn Morrison thinks uh, Campman would have Robin on his team. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Campman and Robin. Camp- very Campman funny. and Robin. In a similar vein, Tag Dan thinks the duo would be Campman and Throbin. Very good. I like that. Throbin. And Mr. S.J. Dean said it would be Towel Boy so he could clean up the sprinkle, sparkle, and spunk. Yeah. Because there'd, like there'd be a lot of mess when Campman's been in. Yes. If he's spraying sprinkles, sparkle and spunk. Yeah. Everywhere. What would you like? What would you 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 are Campman. What would you like? No, your, I don't what would you like your sidekick? Why am I Campman? Just have you heard some of the content you come out with? How uh, how am I Campman? So just think of a sidekick. Okay, I think we'll ask ars- arseless chaps. Um, we also asked what Campman's kryptonite would be. And kryptonite, I believe, is what Superman was sort of... If you sort of showed him kryptonite, he would dissolve or not become powerful or something like that. Yeah, that's that's what we said. It was his Achilles. Yes, his Achilles heel. Oh, I thought, yes. it, was, I thought it was rimming. Well, potentially it's rimming. Okay. Um, Callum Totty suggested Lynx Africa. Mm, that's about year 11, Lynx Africa. Pup 5 thought Campman could fight a dressing gown belt. Okay, that's good. Uh Alan Nagraham said condoms as they would trap his spunk and sparkle. Brilliant. But you should always bag up because it's safe. But don't call it back. Oh, my God. Is that what Bag It Up's about by Jerry Halliwell? <laughs> is it? Uh, is I don't, that I'm... about condoms? You know, you just... I've always thought it was about self-service checkouts. <laughs> Did you... is that... I didn't know there's a Jerry Halliwell song. It's called Bag It Up. Yeah, it... It's a camp icon. Uh, uh, Bag it up, dum, 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 baby boo. Oh, da, ba, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe it is about that. I don't know. I don't, of course, bag it up, don't drop it, baby. She has strong yeah. views on unprotected sex. Mm. But yeah, did your dad never say to you when, like, before you used to go on a night out or go to you and make sure you bag it up? Funnily enough, no. Okay. No. Did he not? No, he didn't. Paris Royal Blue, moving on, <laughs> thinks that Campman's arch nemesis is called Heter O. <laughs> <laughs> You could... No. Andy22 Chad suggested a wrongly eaten banana. Yes. Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. Very good. And Head Over Heels 92 thinks it's the Green Goblin. Or just Goblin. Yeah. Love it. Or Gobbler. Who knew we would get so much content out of Campman? We're going to do a little a little spin-off. I just don't know if we are. A little comic. 
I'm going to write it and do all pictures myself. I highly doubt that. I've got a lot of time on my hands. Okay. Um, this is this little response is from Cat with a K. Dear William and Jordan, firstly, I'd like to extend my condolences to Jordan and our and family on the passing of Frank. Oh, well, thank you. I've never had a dog nor a pet for that length of time, but I fully understand what losing a furry friend is like. Mm. On that note, you reminded me of a small situation in our freezer that I really need to attend to. <laughs> Please find attached the bespoke coffin housing my dead hamster Francis. In the freezer. Unfortunately, she passed during a COVID lockdown period. Yes, I am aware how long this means she has resided in the freezer. In fact, we got a new American fridge freezer last year, so she has even been relocated. Right, stop freezing <laughs> pets. We said this on Tuesday's episode. This meant that we were unable to bury her alongside her brother in my parents' garden, surrounded by lush foliage and colourful plants. Since then, I think my partner and I have just become so used to the presence of a tiny tomb that we can't... <laughs> We can't see the wood for the piece. <laughs> Love it. Since your episode... We... <laughs> Why aren't we that funny? We can't see the wood for the piece. Very good. Since your episode, wheels have been set into motion and the funeral has been arranged. I'd extend an invitation, but it is family and close friends only. Warmest regards, Cat. And she's, I'm looking at the picture now. It's a tiny little coffin next to some uh, British petit pois. Yes. Yeah. How's, how are... How are petit pois British? That sounds French. Well, petit is a type of um, because you have a garden pea, which is slightly bigger, and a petit. Not a fan of garden peas. Do oh you no! Know? What's the marrow fat ones? What's the big ones? The marrow fat. But the the big peas. What are they broad called? beans. No, the big peas in a tin. Marrow fat is it? Yeah, marrow fat peas. You never heard of them? Is this a common thing? <laughs> Possibly. Right. Have you ever had peas from a tin? No. No. <laughs> So yeah, that's the, before I moved to London, I didn't know you could get them any other way. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I like mushy pea. Okay. Have you ever had pea wet? Is that the juice that peas sit in? Yeah, I love it in Wigan. That is disgusting. They have it in the brew in Wigan. I don't care what they do in Wigan. In relation to peas. Obviously, other than that, I'm deeply concerned. Thanks for that. Anyway, Kat. This is from Darren from Ramsgate, continuing a theme. Hi, William Jordan, Diego and team. I recently saw a guide to different types of forks and was hoping the finest etiquette expert this country has to offer. He's not. Would we, be able we, to enlighten us all as to whether they are all real or if some are made up. Kind regards, Darren from Ramsgate. Okay. And it says, hashtag the 11 guides to different types of forks. Well... Looking very quickly down the list, I can already tell you that they've missed quite a few types of forks off. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, there's 11. six, seven. Right, we, we'll put this on social media. Are so they the, all... the first one is an oyster fork. That's fine. The second one is a fruit fork, but they actually mean that's a snail fork, not a fruit fork. Cheese fork, meh. It's more of a service fork rather than an eating fork. Pastry fork, yes, that's correct. Spaghetti fork, absolute load of rubbish. Crab fork, no, that's a lobster pick. Carving fork, Yes. Table fork, fine, although we call oh, it I love dinner a table fork. fork. Oh, fork. <laughs> Fish fork, yes, that's okay. Salad fork, this means a luncheon fork. Dessert fork. Oh, I love a desert fork. Oh, fork. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktail fork is a snail fork again. And then what they've put is a snail fork. It's an absolute load of rubbish. You know your this. forks, don't you? I do. They have missed off. Grapefruit fork, strawberry fork, citrus fork. Cereal fork. Cereal fork? No, not for, you don't use a fork for cereal, you'd use a spoon. Anyway, a few people have got in touch to say Jordan's half-sparkling, half-still water is a thing. Mostly in Germany. What? I am so posh and continental. <laughs> I t is it a German thing? But someone from Italy said it's a thing there too. See, it's half and half. It's, cl it's, it's chic. It's classy. When they go, would you like still a sparkling? You go, I'll have both, please. And I just assumed when you said that, it meant a glass of still and a glass of sparkling. In the same glass. Well, it's very weird. Anyway, this next one is from Izzy. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Is that it? Yeah, that was it on that. See, I think I've... Because previously I've had a bit of German in... No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bit of German in me because obviously I lived, Do you? In, I lived in Germany. My two brothers were born in Germany. Yes. People forget that. So that's why I always open the window first thing in the morning. Because I've talked about this before. <laughs> 
It's like the start of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> bonjour. 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 bonjour, bonjour. Good and talk. Good and talk. <laughs> But I always open my window because that, apparently that's for European. Well, you're meant to air the bedroom, yes. Yeah, and you put your sheets out on balcony. No, you don't do that. Mm. That's so, so damn See, I told you it was chic and cool. Everyone's going to be doing it now. It's not. It's just flat. It's not. I'm so cool. Okay, crashing on. This is from Izzy. Hi, Jordan. People Hi. will be listening to this going, have I changed? Right, last Sunday I was really hungover and walked nearly a mile to try and find some um, teddy bear ham. What's it called? Billy Bear Meat. Billy, I'm, I forgot the name. Billy Bear Meat says craving it, so I had it on some white bread with cheese. It was sourdough from Waitrose, but the point is I had to get some <laughs> Billy Bear Meat, and so there you go. You are funny. This is Izzy. Uh, hi, William Jordan and the rest of the team. Jordan mentioned the restaurant Franco's a couple of weeks ago, and I can confirm that it really is an, an experience for the bucket list. Thank I'm you. a Prestoner and happen to know Franco's very well indeed. It's well worth it, despite the 90s-inspired decor. Oh, don't diss it. That's the best thing about it. She wasn't dissing it. She was saying it had Apparently 90s. Apparently they're doing it up, and Franco's put a little video up of our chat. About oh, did it. they? See you in court. What's your favourite restaurant? I don't know if I have one. Dean Street Townhouse, probably. I don't know. I don't really have one. Do you remember when you were in there and I thought you was having an affair with that vicar? <laughs> <laughs> that vicar, Tom. Yeah. To 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 Tommy right now. Yeah. I was not having an affair with Tom. Mm. We were going to see David Suchet. <laughs> was was nothing but we were going to see David Suchet and Poirot and me. Is that any good? Yeah. I enjoyed it. I follow Tom on Instagram now. Do you? Yeah. He's got a, yeah, it's very good. He's got a what? Like, he's got a little, that little star that comes up on his story, so it's only certain friends that can see it. You're not on that, clearly. If you've got a question or story that isn't a dilemma or problem, this is the place where we can read it out. So drop into our DMs on social media or send us an email to help at sexandmyboss.com with anything that you want to share with us. Can you let me finish before you start getting the ads out? <laughs> Bloody hell. Just trying to move what this we, along. What are we doing next? Uh, it's... Uh... Emirates and Red Nose Day. Oh, the listeners, I love that. <laughs> we also love hearing back from people we have to advise to, so if that's you, get back in touch with us. At Emirates and Red, same advert? No, I think it's separate. Oh, okay. Advert. For more sex and news and nonsense, sign up to our newsletter via sexandmyboss.com. We love you all to bits, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Goodbye. Goodbye.